Regenerative Concepts is a new series which steps beyond the climate concepts to look at other aspects of the planetary puzzle which we need to solve if we want to sustain and restore our world for future generations. We'll journey along a new path, shifting our minds, reconnecting to the world around us and transforming our futures. Our journey starts with the concept of mind shift, recognising that if we want to walk along a new path, we have to realise that there is more than one path. So let's start by asking a question. On our planet and human society is becoming increasingly fragile, but why is this? The answer lies in the way we see the world around us, our world view. The common Western world view focuses on self, wanting to be happy, which is driven by status, wealth, possessions, competition, control. We are locked into the idea that there is an infinite supply of stuff. We just need to work harder and get smarter. But how did we come to hold this view of the world? Well, our way of seeing the world is influenced by a number of things, including the culture and society that we live in, our education and our upbringing. And these create biases, which are hidden filters. We see the world as a second-hand observer, as though we're looking through some tinted glasses. We're sitting inside a bubble. But it wasn't always like this. On our journey of separation, we started as an active observer, using all our senses to give us a broad perspective of knowledge and wisdom. But over time, we moved to a focus on writing and recording, looking at detail and knowledge, narrowing the use of our senses to try and really focus and understand. And we've ended up as a passive consumer, using only limited senses and focusing on theory, logic, information. So outside of the bubble, are there other ways of seeing the world? That Western worldview is unique. No other species on Earth think this way, and many humans don't either. We previously introduced the idea of humanity as part of a system in our system and self-concept as part of climate concepts. Let's expand that to an alternative whole world system view where we consider human society and beyond. The world is not other. Everything is linked. It's really complicated and it's amazing. And we're not in control of it. But where do we fit into that whole systems view? Well, the current Western view holds an ego-centred perspective where man sits at the top of that hierarchy of life. But the whole systems view is eco-centred where man sits within the ecosystem of life. The eco view allows us to see how collaborating to share resources within the whole system is more effective than competing with the other parts. If we want to burst that bubble, we need to understand what's holding it in place. Our common Western world view is focused around consumption, addictions, things that are so ingrained in our thinking that we hardly realise that they exist. On a daily basis, we consume four different types of things. These are things that feed our bodies, food and drink, things that feed our senses, images, sounds, music, movies, websites and so on, things that feed our desires, what we consume in terms of our deepest intentions, our life ambitions, fame and fortune. We also feed our consciousness. We consume from the collective energy that surrounds us. All of these sources of nourishment can be healthy or toxic. By mistakenly trying to improve our well-being by always wanting more, our consumption has become out of balance, harming us and the system. But in thinking about all this, we're forgetting about what really matters. How do we restore that balance? Well, to do that, we need to think about our basic needs, the things that we all have in common. And when I say all, I mean the community of life, not just humans. Those things are really simple. Air, water, food, and a place to belong, a habitat, a home, a community in which to thrive. Our basic needs are part of the system. Each is interdependent on the others. Without good quality air and water and habitat, life can't have food and a safe place in which to thrive. In our Western worldview, 
We've come to take these things for granted, so long as we can afford to pay for them. And we forget that all of these things are linked together as part of a system. We should only take what we need, we should only take our fair share. But what is a fair share? Understanding fair share is linked to how we understand time. Another feature of our Western mindset is that it tends to lock into a human-centric, short-term view. Our online tech focus leads us to think in minutes and hours and days. Our election cycles, financial planning, city building, it's all based on a few months or years, but seldom longer. But to understand our fair share, how much we can take, we need a longer-term view of the planetary processes, the flows and cycles, affecting things like forest growth, soil replenishment, water cycles. So let's look at the water cycle as a simple example. If we think about the supply of water that we use on a daily basis for washing and drinking. In our perspective, once we finish with it, we flush it away, it goes down the drains, it's treated as sewage, it goes into a river, and then our supply of water magically comes from a river or a reservoir, is treated and returns to our home. So our short-term human-centric view, we think of this as being recycled in a few days. But that's not the full picture, because when the water leaves the sewage treatment plant, it doesn't go directly to the water treatment plant. It goes into a river, it evaporates, it may go to an ocean and evaporate. It falls as rain. The, the course of that rainwater can vary considerably. And depending on the route the water takes, this cycle can take decades or even a hundred years. So the fresh water supply is much more limited than we realise. So many of the things that we take for granted are starting to unravel and our basic needs are at risk. And when I talk about basic needs, I mean ours and the planet's. So we're finally beginning to realise that acquiring more and more things isn't what makes us happy, and that there is a limit to the resources that are available to us. We can't control everything. We're part of a really complicated social, ecological system that we need to work within and collaborate with rather than fight or exploit. So to move forward on our journey, we need to reconnect with the world around us and rediscover what it is to be human. And this aspect of reconnection is what we'll explore in our next video.